talked about the Johnson EDC 351. Um, when we get to the the back of the truck, we start talking about the broom. We're going to get a little bit more specific. Right up here on the front, you got a Freightliner M2 chassis. Uh, it's pretty much standard as far as your pre-trip goes that you do on every vehicle before you go out. Check all your vital fluids. You see your dipsticks are located right here on the transmission. This runs an Allison transmission. So you can check the dipstick, but it'll also give you any type of warning through the display module to show you any dips like the gap. Um, other key points, your reservoir for your coolants up on the top or on the passenger side. Always remember to make sure you check your brakes, your slack adjusters, check your vacuum, your uh, leaf springs from the tracks, uh, all your steering connections. You've got uh, electrical connections and fuse box. You actually got two of them up here, and I believe there's one inside. And if you have any questions as we're covering this, make sure you ask. Alright. Okay. Then we're gonna move around the vehicle. Get your fuel, you got your depth, make sure you don't ever change. One of the things you're gonna find on this is you've got two clips right here. And these two clips hold in a magnetic brace. There's two of these. And as you can see on the the uh, uh, schematic right here, you're gonna end up raising this uh, hopper up in order to dump it. When you do that, you should be inspecting your drive axle on your elevator. Okay, they call this an elevator on a conveyor. Inside here, you take the material from the front of the door and back to the back. Now back to these safeties right here. Once you raise this up, if you have a need to get up in there, you service this, you inspect it, clean it out, you need to make sure you avoid these safeties. Okay, there's going to be a C channel right inside here. Once this goes up, it'll open up that C channel and these safeties are designed to lock into that C channel. Then you should lower the, the uh, hopper down slowly just to engage this and press it in there to make sure that if you have a hydraulic failure in there, you don't get crushed by the hopper. Okay. Alright, moving down here onto these brooms. These brooms right here operate different than the Elgins, if you're familiar with that. On the Elgins, they swing out. Okay, on the Johnston, they're going to swing out from the front. Okay, now this is important because what you can find is, um, and it's actually happened, you need to exercise caution as you're driving this because since these swing out from the front, if you tag into something hard, okay, like a barrier or a structure, things of that nature, you can actually tear this broom right off of the vehicle. All right? And since this is spinning the opposite direction, it actually works its way around. Okay, so you need to uh, be careful on that. This does have some manual stops on it. Now you employ those. It's right through here. You can see I'm going to pull this out of the way. Where we've got three holes in this bracket right here. Okay, maximum extension that's going to be 12 feet wide. Okay, then you can set them back to 10 feet. Then you can set them back to 8 feet. Okay, right now I don't have these set because the stops on them on this side has been tore out twice. Okay, there's still one on the other side, but this one for some reason keeps failing, we don't know why. So when you employ these brooms right here, they're gonna go to maximum extension. Okay, it's not like the Elgins where you have to push them out. Once you start them, they're gonna start spinning drop down and they're gonna swing all the way out. And I'll cover the controls on how to drag them back in. And there's a pause when you're trying to drag these brooms back in all right, so be cognizant of that when you're when you're putting these things down. All right, your chances are you're going to want to be stopped. Make sure that if you've got lane of traffic over here, you've got a gap before you put those brooms down to keep anybody from hitting. On these brooms right here, um, when you first get them, they're about 13 inches long. The bristles are. Um, my boot right there is 12 inches. So what I do is I measure it with my boot. Once I get down to six, I go ahead and change them out. Okay, and they're pretty quick to change them out. Relatively easy. All right, any questions? Yeah. Okay, this hopper right here, this is the only access port. And if you step around here, I want to show you something up in here. So if you step back and you look in there, what we've got is we've got an axle that goes across there with two gears on it. It drives on the other side, which I'll show you here in a minute. This is how this one works. You've got two big chains that run from that drive axle on either side. You see where they're, they're positioned, all the way down to an idler on the bottom. Okay, now on that, they basically got angle iron. Okay, you can see that top one right there. And they're using that as a shoe with some rubber matting across it. Now, 
on the Elgin's, it has a big rubber mat with fins on it, and that broom will throw material up on top and it'll carry it up and dump it in. This one will drag it up from the bottom, okay, and it spins in counterclockwise. Now those chains, okay, they tend to stretch a little bit, so they'll sag. Okay, and it's an inspection point, you have to look down the side there, because your chains need to remain three inches apart at the lowest point. Does that make sense? If they're too close together, they're going to end up flattering. You can actually tear them out. If they're too tight, you're going to have undue stress on it. You'll end up stretching the chain. They'll come out of time. Okay? All right, something else is that right there is a catch point for material. You know, like I said, when you're dumping it and you raise this up, just turn around and look through your back window and see if you have anything wraps up around them. Okay? I've seen it pretty bad where it's almost engaging into the, into the gears. All right? So what I carry is I carry a set of linesman pliers on the other side and a pair of compound wire nippers. And a very sharp, sharp line. Okay, things this doesn't like to pick up or any type of strap, string, or rope, or cordage, okay, get away from it when you try it. All right, that should be your big letter people or your, your uh, road brick picking that up. All right, towels, t shirts, blankets, don't try to pick those up. Okay, it's all just get tangled up. Tire shreds that have, uh, for example, the uh, steel belts hanging out, okay, those are catch punch you can see here in just a minute where you can, where I can actually pick them up. All right, also dimensional lumber, okay, sections of two by four, or large rocks, anything bigger than that. Doesn't like to do that, okay? All right. Okay, under this access right here, this is where you got your hydraulic reservoir that powers the equipment. Okay, you've got a level right here, plus you've got a temperature gauge up there, and then you've got your filter. Okay, now if you step up in here, I want to show you this. What you've got is you've got a ram right here. Okay, now this ram right here is connected to a, ha or to a uh, uh, drive axle that's up on top there. On the bottom, this right here is a high pressure button head greaser. Okay, and you need a special adapter to run this. Now the reason why I'm showing you this is once you get that greaser or that adapter, you can put it on a grease gun. Remember what I told you about three inches? This is where you adjust it. Okay, pump this full of grease, it'll extend that ram, it'll push that axle up, and then it'll tighten your chains. Okay, if you over pump them up, then you got to bleed it out, which is kind of a difficult task to do, and I don't want to cover that. Much. All right. Okay, and then we got two water tanks on this. I believe it's 400 gallons total. Okay, these two big black ones right here, and I'll show you where the, the uh, fill is for that here in just a minute. Okay, back here, these side brushes right here, what they're designed to do is they're designed to channel the material into the back uh, broom right here, which is the main broom. That room's just a little short of five feet wide. Because these brushes are brand new, again, they're 13 inches long. You see how far down that's from morning. Every morning before you take off, what you want to do is you want to get in the parking lot of your shed and you want to pattern your brooms because they tend to come out of adjustment. You want to be my pattern then is we're going to set our brooms where we have a recommended amount of contact on the ground. On your side brooms, okay, or your gutter brooms up there, it's going to be 120 degrees, basically a third of a circle. Okay, so when we run these, okay, you just set them down, get them started, let them run on the, on the asphalt for a few minutes, then shut them down, and you can see where that pattern's burned into the asphalt. You also should pattern this one back here. Now, when you pattern this one, okay, what's going to happen is when this engages, that broom's going to drop down. These bristles right here will actually pull that broom up off the ground. So what you have to do is you have to pull forward, flex those bristles, so with this back broom back here, to make contact, okay? Now you want to get about a three to six inch pattern on this back broom right here. Any more than that, you're kind of, you're, you're defeating the purpose of the broom. Any less than that, you may not get the action you need to lift heavy material up into that hopper or into that area to be picked up by those shoes to be dumped into the hopper up there. Okay, now the side brooms, we can actually adjust pressure on those. I'm going to show you the, the uh, adjustment points for those up inside the cab. They're two black knobs. Okay, and these knobs, what you do is you pull them up to unlock them. Okay, then you adjust them. There's a plus and a minus on them. After you get them adjusted, you push them down to lock them in. Okay, so you don't lose any pressure. Now, it's not how much pressure you're putting on the broom. It's actually backwards. As you turn that, it's how much pressure it's taking to lift the broom. So if you want to drop them down, you turn it to minus. Make sense? Okay, if you want them to go up, you have to add pressure to it. Now, this is on the back here. This is a manual adjustment. This is how this system works. You've got a chain right here, which is carrying the weight of this entire bracket room. There's the same thing on the other side. 
All right, now when you go ahead and employ this broom right here, what's gonna happen is this is gonna cam over, this ram right here will suck in. This will cam over, release this chain, drop the broom down, and then it'll be picked up on weight by this chain right here, and again, there's one on the other side. How you adjust this is you can add or subtract linkage from this chain. Okay, that's an excess right there. You'll never get to that. You'll see how much chain goes. Okay, what we've done is we have marked a setting on these links with two orange wire ties with brand new brooms back here. And again, these are going to be 13 inches and they're brand new. They're actually contact and stroker skirt. Okay, this will be set right up there on one on the other side. If I'm orange, I'm going to be set right there. As I start wearing my broom out, I'm going to be dropping links to get that broom to drop down to make contact with the ground. Okay? All right. Okay, right back here, we've got a standard aero board. I'll show you the controls that are up in the cab. This one right here, these brooms have a backup camera, which is a great safety feature. All right, also to give you some intelligence when you're driving down the road to see if you're leaving anything behind. Or if you get something hung up in the broom, remember I told you no dimensional lumber, no rocks, things of that nature. If it binds up the elevator, you can go ahead and reverse it, pause it, kick it out, drive forward, and look to see what it is. And if you got to call somebody in a, in a truck to come out and pick it up, you can go ahead and do that. All right. LED lighting on the back, which is very nice for night work. Okay. Inside here, got a box with our triangles in it in case of emergency. Okay, daily grease point. We've got one right here. Okay, we've got a standard greaser. Now, if you look right down here, we've got a needle. Okay, this needle, when you grease this, actually works out and in, out and in. You want to hit this every day, every morning before you get started, okay, or at night before you park it. Make sure that you run that needle in and out three to seven times. And you can see where these lines come off of here and they run to those individual bearings. And they'll go ahead and grease your bearings for you. It's a good idea when you're walking around and you can feel it when you're pumping that. You'll start to feel resistance. As you're walking around your broom doing your inspection, your, your pre-trip, check to make sure you've got fresh grease that are coming out. Okay, make sure they're not dry. So just in case you've lost a line somewhere, you've got a pinch in it. All right, make sure that you take care of those bearings. Another location, I do this in every couple of days. We've got a grease circuit right here for the water pump. Okay, I give that one three, five shots, just depends. All right, if you give it too much, you may have some water blow by here. This right here is your water filter. Okay, now you don't need to drain your tanks to change your water filter, it's kind of a cool system. You've got a red handle right here. You turn that, it'll actually pop out a little bit. And what that does is that seals water off from the main tanks down to the water pump. Then you can just hand tighten this one right here and replace it. But you can use your hand, unscrew that, pull it out, get your water filter out, take it over, rinse it out, make sure you've got all the. Uh... You can change that water filter out. I check it every month. You just get the debris out of here? Yeah, what you'll get is you'll get like uh, basically crud in there. You may get some dust in there, making mud, you may get some algae, things of that nature. Uh, I check every month kind of how much water I run through it. And you'll find that I don't run a lot of water. It depends. So to me, and, and I've found that, again, depending upon the material, um, if I put a lot of water down, what does water and dirt make? Okay, and on the I-15 where you got the, the grooves in it, they pack full of mud and end up coming back through and sweeping it up anyway. So it, it, it's a personal call. Also back here you've got two oil oil coolers, one on either side. Um, when, you, when you're cleaning your broom out, run a little bit of water on here but no pressure, it's best to blow these out with air, just like a radiator. If you run a lot of water in there, that dirt, all you're doing is just forcing everything in there to where it can't breathe and it'll heat up your, your uh, oil. Okay. All right. Okay, this, here again, that, that uh, back broom adjustment for this side. Be careful because you can actually throw them off. In fact, if you're driving down the road, this is a really nice ride when you're going slow. Um, when you're going fast, it's the short wheel base, so it tend to boost up a little bit. Seat belts, of course, I know you're going to be, you're going to be wearing seat belts, and you'll know, feel that when you take the out for that. You're trying to beat you up. Anyway, um, one thing you're going to want to check, and, and what I try to do is when I'm moving from location to location, um, if I hit a bump and it's pretty bad, I'll, I'll park the truck where it's safe, I'll get out and I'll walk around back here and I'll check my chains. Because I've actually had this chain jump out of this track once. Okay, and it threw my broom off kilter, and it dug this side down. And how this works is on that axle that goes through there, you got a, you got a big, uh, basically an axle that runs through there with two rubber spindles on there. 
All right, and then you got a tube that holds all your brushes, right? Now, how that works is these, this rubber has bolts to it. So as you tighten these bolts up, it compresses that rubber and expands it out. So it'll grab a hold of that tube and start turning. It's on a friction system. And we actually spun that, that rubber and actually heated it up to where it wasn't gripping anymore and it wouldn't turn. See what I'm saying? So make sure you're checking your chains. Um, and also what you want to do every week is we've got, we've actually got nine bolts on here. All right, we've got a cap head screw, all right, and that's what you're going to take off to replace the, the brushes on the back. And you have to do that from the other side. You're not going to take this off because it's the dry side. All right, and then you've got um, three bolts, okay, that are hex head, and actually tighten up those, uh, those rubber pieces in there to give it additional grip. You shouldn't have to do that. All right, we've got um, three additional bolts right here on that flange. Check those bolts, make sure they're tight because they've had a point of failure on one of the brooms on that. In fact, I think there's two of them there. If I remember correctly, they've had uh, those bolts fail on it. They've created an issue. Okay. All right, on these brooms right here, on these side curtains, I told you they were 13 inches long. What you're gonna find is they're gonna wear on an angle. All right, the fronts will stay long and the backs will start wearing down. What I try to do is every couple, four days, it only takes a few minutes, taking these two bolts out, drop that bracket, slide that broom out, and then I turn it around and shove it back in. And that way I can get kind of a level a level uh, plane on it. Plus it helps them last a little bit longer. Um, remember what I was telling you about the tires and those shreds? They tend to hang up on things. And you can see where I've got some twists in here. That's where that comes from. If you're not careful when you're trying to pick that up, what'll happen is you'll get material, okay, towels or what have you, get hung up in here makes what I call a tootsie roll. And it starts gathering up all this garbage and running over it and it starts twisting it. Because this broom is rolling it. Okay, and it's rolling it backwards. Now what happens is it'll block the, the actual path off where it can't pick up the dirt or anything else. Okay, even though it's trying because you got the big tootsie roll and you're just running over the top and kicking it out the side. Alright, so make sure that you're checking that out. Um, my best piece of advice to you is to get like some compound snips. Okay, I'll show you what we picked up. Um, some linesman pliers. All right, so you can go ahead and clean this thing out. Okay. All right, on this side, what we've got is we've got the actuators for this entire system. Okay, we've got the control box up front, which we'll cover here in just a second. Depends upon who you talk to when you clean this thing out. Um, when we received training on it, they said you can you can run water over this, just not high pressure. Uh, and then there's some of them that'll tell you that you shouldn't get it wet. You gotta get it clean. That's what I'm gonna say there. Okay. You come around here. I gotta. I'm gonna show you something down inside here. There's a there's a cleaning point. When I when I clean this thing out, I'm actually gonna be washing it twice. Okay. And if you look right down inside here, there's a pan. And you're gonna see where it's starting to build up dirt on it. Okay. That right there is a is a dirt trap that'll build up fast. Okay. In a day, I can get the three to four inches of dirt down inside here. And I have to clean that out every night. If you don't. Okay, what happens is, when you raise this hopper up, if you look right here, you can see where this elevator, the quality elevator, is actually stuck inside that hopper. And what's going to happen is, before that hopper will go up, this elevator has got to come back. You see this ram right here? It's going to drag that back. And what happens back here is on that plate, it actually slides up underneath those uh, water tanks. If they build up too much dirt, it can't slide back, and then you can cut block. All right, so make sure you clear that out. All right, underneath here, okay, we've got some water connections. Okay, and we replaced ours with cam locks. Okay, out the back, we both found that that works a little bit better. The rear one right here feeds my water tanks. So what I do is I pull into the wash rack, I hook up to my rear one, I go ahead and I fill up my water tanks as I'm filling that up. I'm spraying everything off, you know, back around the other side, spraying this off right here. And then what I'll do is after I'm through with that, I'll remove that one, bring it to this front one. Now the front cam lock runs up this red hose right here, and if you look up inside here, We've got a spray bar that runs across the top of that elevator. Okay, and that's for cleaning out that elevator. So then I'll go ahead and hook up to that one, turn the water back on, it's flushing everything out. And then I'll go ahead and power up my PTO, power up my control unit, and then I run that elevator in reverse and try to clean off all my shoes and carry material off. Okay, this is another really cool thing to put up underneath here. We've got a butterfly ball valve. You see this yellow one right here? Okay, and that's a winterization. Go ahead and open that up. Go ahead and open that up. It'll start to drain your tanks. Okay, and on your control inside, and I'll show you this one. Okay, you've got a switch you can actually flip. 
It will pressurize the system, blow the water out, so you don't have to worry about freezing. Okay? We park our broom inside at night, even in the wintertime. All right? And we tend to carry a little bit of oil. All right? Any questions? Oh. Okay, remember I told you there's an adjustment ram on, on both sides? You can see this one right here? That's connected to the drive unit. There's a chain that runs on a sprocket from that drive unit up to that drive axle. All right? At least once a month I try to hit that with some WD-40. They try to keep that moved up and try to keep the rust out of it. Again, the principle on that adjustment ram is the same. Hit the high pressure button, hit cap screw, just stick a, an adapter on it with the grease gun. Right, so you can actually work that thing up. This, these chains will stretch at different, different intervals, depending upon what you're picking up. One side, if you're running, you're sleeping on one side a lot, you can move away and stretch that chain a little bit more. Okay? Read the grease points, there's seven. Research on this door right here. Make sure that you hit those. Um, this door, when you're running an Elgin, okay, when you run that hopper up to dump it, you have to slide the hopper out. Okay, it comes off the side. With this one, it doesn't slide out. It goes straight up. You can see how massive this door is? I can be about 18 inches away from my, my uh, dump truck when I'm dumping into it and still be able to hit it. But be careful when you raise this thing up. I'm gonna tell you right now, with experience, you're gonna find out that you can do certain things. I'm going to tell you to run it straight up before you start to dump it. This door will drop faster than it will raise. Okay, you can actually tie it to the side of the bed of the truck. You don't want to do that. How much weight is recommended? You know, I don't know the weight configuration on that. I do know that I have had this almost all, all I've had as much material as it can hold and it's still lifted it up. Okay, and the material is wet. It's, uh, I've never run into a problem. It's pretty nice. Okay. All right. Remember, I was talking to you about uh, manual stops on these, where you can adjust them in and out. You see, right here, I've got a shoe where my other one's been torn out, and that's what catches on that manual stop right here. All right. Now you can see on this side right here, our, our broom is raked really heavy. So we've been sweeping on a lot of curb and gutter. All right. And you'll get to get in there and kind of play around with it. You can see how this one on this side is wearing out a lot faster than the other side. And I think it's due to having that, that radical on Alright. Alright, if you take a look up in here, uh, I'm going to show you the, the basic functions of the cab. Alright, the steering remains active on either side, regardless of the left hand drive or right hand drive. Brakes remain active on either side, whether it's the left hand or right hand drive. When you make your switch from left to right, what that's actually changing is the throttle control. And if you look right there, right above the microphone, and right there by the, the park brake, you can roll the air release, there's a red light. Okay, right now it's not lit up, that's a good thing. Okay, because if you're switching it and it starts to flash, that means you've had your foot on the, the throttle because you're trying to switch it from left to right. If it comes on and stays lit, you've got a problem climbing the can. You can that off the vehicle. Okay, from the other side. All right, the uh, steering wheel adjustment is right down here. Okay. You will see that. Pull that up and drop the steering wheel down. Standard, <laughs> standard air ride seat. Controls for the pressure on the other side right here. And this is the take of the uh, front and back. Okay, this big gray box right here in center, it spins so you can operate it from left to right. And this is that little cheat sheet that I gave you right here. This is what you're going to be looking at. The very top, number one, is a green light. That's going to be your pause button. When you're, under, when you're under operation on this and you have a PTO engaged, you're going to be limited on how fast you can go. Okay, I think it's like 17 to 20 miles. It's just not that fast. The rest of it will get it. Kind of change the way you see. Okay, that's why we get it. It's because of the safety factor right there. Alright, anyway, what this is going to do is if you run across something, for example, you're sweeping down the road, somebody's walking down the sidewalk, you don't want to dust them out, you want to pause them. Okay, or come up on something that you don't want to run over and you got to move it out of the way. You want to pause it. Okay, or something that effect. When you push this button, push it all the way down, it's going to light up. What that's going to do is that's going to shut down operation. Your PTO is still engaged. Okay, but your brooms will stop. And then they go back up in the stowed position. All right now, if you remember, um, earlier I told you when you start these brooms, they go out to full extension, you got to bring them back in, unless you've got your manual stops engaged. Once you release this button to bring it back into normal operation, they're going to go back out to start point. Not where you left them, not where you had them adjusted, but all the way out again. So be cognizant of that. 
are the number two switches. Both sides, um, it's left and right, in and out adjustment. They're rocker switches, so they're momentary. All right, you got three, four, five, and then three, four, five on the other side. The four switches are all light switches. We have an individual, independent uh, LED light for each broom. Okay, we have two for the back, and then we also have a light right up here for the hopper that'll shine in that window. Okay, the uh, number three button, that's to engage the brooms to start them up. Your number five button, that's your tilt. If you rock that switch up, it'll tilt the broom. If you pull it down, it'll flatten the broom, and you can actually put a reverse tilt on it just a little bit. All right, the seven switches, those are push button switches. All right, um, they're going to be illuminated when they're engaged. What those are, those are water. You have left water, right water, and then you have the front water. The number eight switch, that is the dump feature on this. This will not dump, or it will not raise, unless you're in neutral, or park, and PTO is wrong. If you've got it in gear and the park brake set, it won't raise. Now, once you start to raise this thing, okay, which is the number 10 button, okay, it will not dump unless you have it raised. Remember I told you that? That elevator's got to come out of the inside of that before it'll start to tip. So you have to you have to raise it up just a few inches before you can start to dump it. Um, number 11, this is a momentary switch. That's your elevator core in reverse. Okay. When you have an alarm go off on this truck, the alarm only makes one sound. But it covers everything. It covers everything from low air pressure to your elevator being bound up. Okay, so. If you hear an alarm, you're going to figure out what it is. All right. um, there's, there's different color-coded lights up by the control panel itself. Um, of course, orange is low air pressure. Red means that your uh, hopper has a switch that's it's not really engaged for some reason. Or the switch is failed or you don't think it's not back down. Um, to it. Okay. Um, the number 12, this is an elevator raised switch. This is kind of a cool feature. All right? What that allows to happen is, once you start everything up, once you hit the switch, the number six switch for the back room, it's going to start spinning. And that's going to drop down. That's going to drop down. And your elevator is going to start working. Now, if we need to, we can actually use that brush to scrub. And we do that by raising up that elevator. Okay, because the elevator is going to continue to turn, the elevator is going to continue to run as long as that burns on okay, Now, for example, let's suppose we have a liquid seal. We're going to put some dry sweep on it on the road. Okay, rather than standing out there with the broom, kind of scrub that in, what we can do is we can bring this up here, fire up our back broom, raise our elevator, and use that back broom to scrub that dry sweep across that, that liquid. And once we get it scrubbed in, then we can come back in, drop our back, our elevator, and then we can pick up the material we just used it to put up the lid. Okay. The number 13 switch, that's that pressure switch for the winterization that I showed you back there on that yellow butterfly valve. Um, 14, that's your beacon and your wigwags on the back. Okay, and I'll cover the, the other emergency lighting here once we get up inside the cab. And your 15, that right there is your is your power for this control unit. Okay, so none of those switches will work until you have that 15 on. Okay, the 15, you push it down, green light will backlight. And, you know, and then you know you've got your, uh, your uh, control monitor running. The PTO switch, right there we've got our, our radio plugged in. It's on the top row of switches all the way over the passenger side, and that's what it looks like. The broom will not operate unless the PTO is on it. This is where it's different from the Elgin. The Elgin has a pony motor that runs everything. We run off a PTO that's located right underneath here. That's a, a, a monthly grease point. You've got a drive shaft that comes off the transmission into the PTO. You've got two U-joints plus the drive shaft itself. Make sure you hit that once a month. It's a good idea to get it on a lift to do it. Um, that's what we have to do. And I like to get it on there, raise it up, and make sure that we don't have anything that's hung up. Just an under undercarriage inspection. All right? Um, when you engage that PTO switch, I would encourage you to stop um, before you engage it uh, because it's kind of hard on it if you're, if you're coasting. If you're going too fast, it won't engage it. All right? So just go ahead and stop engage it and then stop to take it out. All right. Any questions? All right. That covers our walk around. Everything else is going to be up inside the cab while we're operating. Okay. When we start this up, we're going to go ahead. There's a, there's a battery shutoff switch right over here on the floor by my seat. Okay. Um, if I'm going to leave the, 
the vehicle set for a weekend, I'll go ahead and kill the battery to it. So that way I know that uh, there's not going to be a drain on it and it'll fire up in case we need it. When we start the vehicle up, of course, make sure the battery switch is engaged. We're going to go ahead and turn the ignition on. Now what's going to happen is my gauges on the driver's side will sweep. The ones on the passenger side will not. What that's doing is going through a self-test. I'm going to let it sweep over and then come back before I try to start it. Make sure that I don't have any errors or any warnings that are displayed. Make sure that I don't have my glow plug still on. Then I can go ahead and start the vehicle. Okay. Let me close this. Alright. Other gauges we got. We got standard air conditioning gauges right here. If you're going to run the air conditioning, I encourage you to run it on uh, recirculate. Um, because there is an in-cab filter that tends to get really dirty if you don't. We've got our parking brake, we'll go apply, push to release. This right here is our, our uh, error message for switching it from left to right on the throttle like I talked about earlier. Uh, we've got standard rocker switches, we've got door lock, unlock, we've got driver side window, passenger side window, also we've got a passenger side window on uh, that door handle over there. We've got the light bar for the rotator uh, beacon on the uh, cab. Okay, it's just an on switch. It's got a red light backlight on it. Right, we've got a standard Allison transmission, reverse neutral drive. Try to go to neutral before you uh, switch directions. Safe wear and tear. Also, this is a smart monitor. It'll tell you if there's any type of fault with the transmission, uh, which is really cool. We have uh, headlights, park lights, we've got light test traction control, we've got high and low range for the uh, transmission rear end. Uh, in high range you're able to do 70 miles an hour on the freeway. When it's allowed in low range you're topped out at about 60. This right here is your PTO. Okay, Up and back lit is engaged. This is where I would tell you to go ahead and make sure that you're uh, stopped before you engage it because uh, it's, it's easier on the, the PTO itself. Um, without the PTO engaged, your chrome won't operate. Then we've got our cruise control gauges right here, regen speed control. We've got a standard power mirrors for left and for right. And this is where you switch it from left to right on the throttle. Okay. All right, these are our broom adjustments. Okay, again, like I said, you pull up to unlock, you turn it, push down to lock. All right. Uh, Turning it to the minus will drop the brooms. Turning a plus will raise the brooms. All right, this is our broom control, or speed control. Right now we've got it going as fast as it'll go. All right, to control our arrow board in the back, okay, we've got a remote display unit right here. There's a button located right underneath. Everybody tends to mash it too hard. Just gently push it up. It'll power up the unit. It'll turn it into a touch screen. Tap patterns. You just select whatever you want to display. It'll jump back to the start screen, then it'll show you what is flashing on the back. Turn it off, tap patterns again, tap patterns again, hit blank, and we're turned off. And up here we've got our backup camera display. Okay, as long as it's clean and working, you'll be able to see what's happening in the back. Once we put the vehicle in reverse, you'll have active lines, or excuse me, not active lines, you'll have backup lines green and then you've got the yellow track where your tires will hit. Red is danger. Okay, they're not active because they don't turn on the steering wheel. Okay?